Yeah. <clears throat> All right. Uh, well, what's up, everybody? Grim Green back here today. I don't know why I'm saying that. This isn't a review. Welcome to or welcome back to uh, Tuesday Bro Tuesday. You know, it's Tuesday Bro Tuesday. It used to be a live call-in show. I would like, to, maybe we'll go back to that someday. That's the reason that I still use that hold music that sounds like you're on the phone, you know, at the beginning of this. It's all it's all part of the theming, you see. I've gone full Disney. It's part of the theming, the hold music, the call-in show. I thought, wow, that's so clever, Nick. That's so clever. It's okay. Maybe we'll go back to that someday. I think I have the ability to do that again, and, and I would really like to try. But what we do nowadays... <laughs> I see you there, Hooked on Funk. Thanks for being here. I appreciate it. Frames, I appreciate you here. I'm not going to shout out the entire chat, but I appreciate you. Wired, Wired Talk with Big G. Thanks for being here, man. What we do nowadays is we sort of unpack a little bit of the news that's been going on as it relates to the world of vaping, uh, tobacco, smoking, tobacco control, nicotine, tobacco harm reduction, uh, cigarettes, and the such as First and foremost, I'm a freedom guy. Say that every time. Uh, I don't know why I put my hand up like this. That's just, you know, swearing in, I guess. I put my hand on a holy book and swear in. Freedom guy, first and foremost. I'm a registered libertarian. So that's the lens that all of this news is going to get viewed through. And there's just been a lot going on recently and we got a lot to talk about today. In fact, for the last few Tuesday Bro Tuesdays, we've had special guests on, you know. We've been having Danielle Jones on, we had Michelle Mitten on, we had Colin Mendelson on. I'm reaching out to a few other people to get some more, uh, you know, perspectives on this, like people who have been in tobacco control and working in the field of tobacco harm reduction. If you have any suggestions for me, I'd love to hear it. Otherwise, I'm reaching out to uh, to a few people here and there. You know, I don't want to have a guest every single week, but I do like to have, uh, you know, I, I do like to have guests on. I like to get that uh, sort of other perspective. In fact, last week's Tuesday Bro Tuesday, if you haven't gone back, and if and caught the replay of last week's Tuesday Bro Tuesday with Colin Mendelson, I would highly recommend it. Highly rec. Oh, don't worry. Oh, don't you don't you worry, Southern Comfort. Southern Comfort in there with the super chat. No shout out for me. Wag the finger to you. Don't even trip, Southern Comfort. You got a big shout out coming up uh, a little bit later on. And I think I think you know what I mean, Southern Comfort. Maybe you do, maybe you don't. Maybe you're just really super confused right now. But last week's Tuesday Bro Tuesday, you guys, with Colin Mendelson was, you know, I always say this, it was one of my favorite interviews that we did on this Tuesday Bro Tuesday program. He is really sharp, really smart, gets it. He's real on it. He gave me a lot of hope. You know, there's uh, there's chapter markers, there's timestamps for last week's Tuesday Bro Tuesday. And if you go to the... Uh, don't remember what timestamp it is. I'll, I'll try to, it's one of the timestamps, but we were talking about Alex Wodak and we were talking about how people that have been in tobacco control for a really long time. And he was very confident saying things like, you know, well, we're definitely going to win this. We're definitely going to win this. It's literally just a matter of time and it's going to be, you know, a little bit of a time. It's going to be a little bit of a climb up shit mountain but, but we're going to win this. He's talking about, well, Alex Wodak, who one of my advocacy heroes retweeted me recently. And uh, I just jumped around and giggled because I was so excited that Alex Wodak retweeted me. But Alex Wodak, he's been in harm reduction for, you know, a huge portion of his life. And he himself is very confident that harm reduction measures like this, it's always always met with resistance at first, you know, even things like uh, uh, condoms and safe needle exchanges and seat belts. Believe it or not, there are people that were against seat belts. There were groups of people that were against seat belts. And now you wouldn't even think of driving a car without a seat belt unless you don't, I mean, unless you don't want to look, I'm not going to put that on you, but seat belts. So harm reduction, things like this, they win. They always win. We have so much science on our side. So last week's Tuesday Bro Tuesday, really spectacular. It's available in a podcast format as well. If you don't want to like 
sit in front of a screen and watch a screen or, you know, I, I like podcasts when I'm doing other stuff and you can kind of listen, you know, listen passively to the podcast and not focus all of your attention on it. You know, 2020, we got such short times, you know, short attention spans these days. It's hard to read any sort of news, but damn it, we got a lot to talk about today. We're going to talk a little bit about uh, Brad Rudu and how I believe that he can predict the future. We're going to talk a little bit about uh, youth vaping, youth smoking. That seems to be a topic that's constantly coming up. We're going to talk a lot about uh, nicotine. I did a nicotine uh, survey about a month ago, and I never shared the results. Yeah, Dakota Simon in with the super chat. Rest in peace, Eddie Van Halen. I can't, this, I cannot believe this. Hang on, where'd my Chrome go? Um, where'd my Chrome go? Nope, that's not my Chrome. That's my desktop wallpaper. Well, here's my Chrome. There, yeah, Eddie Van Halen. Unreal. I'd like to have a little, uh, a little moment of silence for Edward, Edward Van Halen. A little moment of silence for Edward Van Halen. Have a vape. Moment of silence. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. You know, if I had to share a little Eddie Van Halen story, it's that uh, Van Halen was the first band like right before Kiss that I really like, you know, dove into. Like, nope, this, the, 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 the Van Halen is my favorite band. They're just my favorite band. And I went on that time, you know, I did it with Kiss. I did it with Metallica where it's like, nope, Kiss is my favorite band and all I listen to is Kiss and all that's on my walls are Kiss posters. And that shit, and you're like, nope, no, Metallica is my favorite band. All I listen to is Metallica and Metallica posters are all over my room. I went through a heavy, heavy, <laughs> heavy Van Halen phase where all I, and I discovered Van Halen much later on in my life. And I went through a huge Van Halen phase. Uh, and I just went back through their entire catalog and just, just ate it all up with a, with a spoon, with a guitar shaped spoon. I thought Eddie Van Halen was a genius. I thought it was a baller move, like a real stand-up guy kind of move. He showed up to uh, Dimebag Daryl's funeral, and Dimebag, you know, from Pantera, just looked up to Eddie Van Halen so tremendously, and Eddie Van Halen showed up at Dimebag's funeral, and I just thought that was such a classy boss baller move. But I can't believe it. Yeah, it's it's fear. It's in. I, I don't even know what to say. He, he died of throat cancer. You know, that's how, let's tie this back around to vaping and tobacco harm reduction. Eddie Van Halen, lifelong smoker. I remember watching live videos of Van Halen and he's just got his burning cigarette in the headstock of his guitar. Just, you know, hammer ons like crazy. Just eruption, you know, just a burning cigarette. And then he'd stop and he'd take some drags on a cigarette and he'd stick it back in the headstock and he just <laughs> lifelong smoker uh, eventually succumbed to throat cancer. And that is uh, that's horrific, Matt Sinister, right? So bummed out about Eddie Van Halen. Rest in peace. Uh, rest in peace, Edward Van Halen. Rest in peace. Throat cancer, man. That's a hell of a thing. And that's a, whoops, there's you see the intro again. That's a hell of a thing, man. And it, like, if vaping had existed or if he had got into vaping, who knows? He might've quit cigarettes uh, uh, 10 years ago when I did. Maybe he, he, maybe he would've quit cigarettes in 2009 and just been vaping up until then. There's a lot of musicians. Josh Homme from Queens of the Stone Age quit smoking with vaping. Uh, Dave Navarro quit smoking with vaping. Could have been there. It could have been a thing for him, but it wasn't a thing. It wasn't a thing. So rest in peace, Eddie Van Halen. Got another super chat here from Southern Comfort. Ha! I have no idea. Uh, is it a biker thing? Strippers, money, gun, rights, Republicans, Doug, Stellar Vapor. Rest in peace, Eddie. It is none of those things, Mr. Southern Comfort. Oh, you just, oh, you just wait. Just hang, 
hang on to your britches. So let's uh, let's dig into a little bit of the news that's been going on, apart from Edward Van Halen. Rest in peace, Edward Van Halen. Uh, Pam Cakes from the uh, chat says, uh, Eddie maintains that he didn't get throat cancer from smoking. Yeah, he said it was due to using metal picks that he used to keep in his mouth. I thought that was very interesting too. I don't know. I, you know, I don't know any of the science behind that. If heavy metal poisoning, heavy metal from a, a pick using a metal pick in your mouth, and then that you're swallowing or drinking water or beer, or liquor, or some sort of, you know, could be, could be, could be. All I know is that he was a lifelong smoker and I saw him perform and smoke more cigarettes than a guitar player should over the course of one concert. Stay hydrated, Hydro Homies. So rest in peace, uh, rest in peace, Edward Van Halen. So the first little bit of news I'm going to throw out there, I do this every single time, still an active call to action. Kasa, protect the vape mail. We got to protect the vape mail. This is S1253. This is the ban vape mail bill. And like I told you guys last week, you can go to govtrack.us. In fact, I'm going to put this link in the description right now so you can get uh, so you can get a little bit ragey with with me. But this bill just infuriates me. S1253 just in. It says, uh, should a loophole allowing minors to purchase tobacco products online be tightened or closed? A, it's not a loophole. B, it should be tightened, not closed. Prohibition cannot be like the default jump to conclusion of, well, there's an issue. Uh, well, we'll just, we'll just ban it, right? Well, we'll just ban it. They think that youths are getting their electronic cigarettes, their disposable e-cigs off of websites, which despite what the evidence says, that's still what they think. They cite data from 2018. They say e-cigarette use among teens has reached its highest highest levels yet in 2018. We're not going to bother with any of that new data or information that we got from the CDC that shows that youth vaping is going down and that youth smoking is at an all-time low. Just, eh, no. We need to ban <laughs> ban online sales. This has widespread bar bipartisan support all over the place. Uh, Diane Feinstein was the first to pick it up. Of course, it was John Corrin from Texas who authored this whole thing. You can read it. You can read the summary. You can read uh, where it is in the process. You can read, like I said, it has a 40%, 42% chance of being enacted according to Scoops Labs, which, again, I feel like that's a pretty low chance of this going through, you know? I feel like if we keep doing the calls to actions, we could. But this is something we could definitely, definitely stop. Definitely, definitely, definitely stop. So uh, I'll put a link in the description yeah, where you can do the uh, CASA call to action. Had a Southern Comfort uh, super chat. Uh, drawn a blank. That's okay. We'll get there when we get there, Southern Comfort. Matt Sinister, that's very gracious of you. In with the super chat. I'm, I'm still waiting for a statement from Sammy Hagar. Uh, he had been trying to mend fences with Eddie Van Halen for years. He must be devastated. Hashtag 5150. I have not heard anything from Sammy Hagar about this. In fact, here is a real unpop, real unpopular opinion, if you're ready for it. I prefer Van Hagar <laughs> to Van Halen. I like Van Halen with Sammy Hagar so much more than I like Van Halen with David Lee Roth. And look, don't get me wrong. Those first couple Van Halen albums, they're, they're spectacular, dude. They're awesome. And... You know, Mr. Mr. Jump Up and Down and, and do the splits in the air, David Lee Roth, he was fine. But Sammy Hagar took that band to the next level, and I will always love uh, Van Hagar so much. So much more, Matt Sinister. So much more. Are you going to unsubscribe for me now because I said that? Wired Talk with Big G definitely is going to. But I'll post a link down in the description. Like I said, GovTrack, you can read all about it and uh, see why we need to stop it. Uh, I'm going to spend zero time on this, but the Veritas cohort study is a thing. If you've smoked less than 1,000 cigarettes total, definitely, definitely try to sign up and be a part of this study. It's going to be 
Reward. Imagine how rewarding it's going to feel to be part of a huge vape study that's going to help the tobacco harm reduction cause in like a severe, very seriously severe way. Be a part of the Veritas cohort study. Oh, man. And my Caliburn G's battery just died. Could 2020, could 2020 get any worse? Unbelievable. I know. And look, it's a really unpopular opinion, Tom. But that's the thing about opinions is they don't care about what your opinion is. It's just my opinion. I like, I like Black Sabbath more with Ronnie James Dio than I did with Ozzy Osbourne. I'll say that too. You want me to say that? <laughs> I'll say <laughs> I'll say it. Uh, there, we had some action in Australia as well. I wanted to throw... Wanted to throw some of this news out there. You know, having Colin Mendelson on Tuesday, Bro Tuesday last week, I like to check in on Australia every once in a while because Australia seems to be going through like the same exact problems that the United States is as far as smoking, smoking-related deaths, youth vaping. You know, in Australia, they're trying to blame this on, like, oh, there's been more poisonings, nicotine poisonings when... Really, you look at the data and you disseminate the data and you kind of go, oh, that's not that's not what's happening. Uh, that's not that's not actually what's happening at all in Australia. But they're still trying to blame it on things. And and nicotine is illegal there. Can you imagine nicotine? Just harmless old nicotine being completely illegal in Australia. And if you get caught importing it after the first of the year, 2021, you get like a two hundred thousand dollar fine. $200,000 fine. That's obscene. That's insane to me. But there's a little bit of news out of Australia right here. We had, uh, I don't know exactly, look, and I don't know exactly the way that the politics in Australia works, but this lady, Senator Holly Hughes, uh, tweeted and said, today, uh, the motion Senator uh, Canavan and I moved was passed establishing the select committee into tobacco harm reduction, better known as vaping. I will soon, uh, I will update soon with how to provide submissions. The hearing will be brief and the report completed by December, 2020. So they're really going after this. And this is kind of a huge deal in Australia, kind of a huge deal in Australia. This would be the equivalent of like a, a, a Senator or something from the United States proposing uh, Mitch Zeller from the FDA create a new like special group that was so like from FDA tobacco, like a new special group that is solely focused on tobacco harm reduction and vaping and doing a study on it and then having these results by December 2020 so that all of Congress could you know, be educated and be informed as to what's going on with vaping and tobacco harm reduction and smoking rates and flavors and nicotine and youth uptake and all of these things. Uh, it's kind of a big deal. Uh, in fact, there's a big, there's a lot of information out there. Uh, one more, <laughs> Sammy was a fantastic vocalist though, not to be, not to mention the service he did for radio microphone companies. Yeah, sure. Look, Sammy is a great vocalist, unbelievable vocalist. I'm telling you, he took that band to the next level. I didn't care for Gary Sharon in in Van Halen. You know, when when uh, the singer from Extreme, Gary Sharon, was their singer. I, I didn't care for Van Halen at that point. But give me Van Hagar all day long. Appreciate that, Vaping Maniac. Doing well, doing well. But Australia, so let's look at this. Uh, let's look at what's going on in Australia. This was their, uh, this was their motion to select a committee to be known as the Select Committee on Tobacco Harm Reduction be established to inquire into tobacco reduction strategies with particular references to the treatment of nicotine and vaping products in developed similar countries like Australia, the United Kingdom, New Zealand, the European Union, the United States, including but not limited to legislative and regulatory frameworks, the impact of nicotine vaping products uh, they've had on smoking rates in these countries, and the aggregate population health impacts of these changes in nicotine consumption, uh, established evidence on the effectiveness of e-cigarettes as a smoking cessation treatment, the established evidence on the uptake of e-cigarettes amongst non-smokers and the potential gateway effect into tradi to traditional tobacco products, which we know there's no gateway effect. 
we know we can say very certainly, very certainly there. We, we can't say very certainly until we see the 20, the rest of the 2020 national youth tobacco survey, but I'll bet you dollars to bananas that smoking rates among youth is still down and is still trending downward. And the only reason I say that is because I feel like if smoking rates were up, that's what, that's the first thing that CDC would have said. They wouldn't have bothered with vaping. If smoking rates had gone back up, the CDC would have, would have said it first. That would have been the first thing out of the gate. So we know that there's no gateway effect. They're good. They go on to do other things. The evidence of impact of legalizing nicotine vaping products on youth smoking and vaping rates uh, and measures that Australia could adopt to minimize youth smoking and vaping access to e-cigarette products under Australia's current regulatory frameworks, tobacco industry involvement in the selling and marketing of e-cigarettes. So I think this is great. Uh, this politician, Holly, Senator Holly Hughes, they're getting together a committee and they're going to get into uh, they're going to get into vaping in Australia. And I think that's pretty great. Uh, I think that's a big step forward. Uh, that's really what I like to see. That's really what I like to see. So uh, no links in the description that I can put exactly for that other than we'll keep an eye on it. You know, Australia has become, you know, the, the global, the greater vape community has become like my focus of what else is going on? You know, we've talked about the Netherlands in the past and Ireland, they got some bad stuff coming up. You know, we take a look at Australia. We take a look at New Zealand. I'm going to try to uh, report on all of it. Matt Sinister in with the super chat. I'm a lifelong Hagar fan, 12 concerts and fuck 2020. Yeah, absolutely. In fact, my dad got to take pictures of Sammy Hagar. He was the photographer when Sammy Hagar opened a Cabo Wabo location in Lake Tahoe, California, or Lake Tahoe on the Nevada side, rather, because Lake Tahoe splits the border up there. So the casinos are on the Nevada side and some of the resorts are on the California side. But when Cabo Wabo opened in Lake Tahoe, my dad was hired by Sammy Hagar as the photographer, took a bunch of pictures of a live performance uh, at the Cabo Wabo restaurant in Lake Tahoe. It was awesome. It was great. It was spectacular. In fact, when I was a little kid, I guess we're just going to talk about Van Halen today. That's fine. Look, Eddie Van Halen died of throat cancer from being a lifelong smoker. That's, I mean, that's pretty on topic. It's pretty current events. It's pretty current event news. But when I was a little kid, I loved Van Halen and I loved uh, Eddie Van Halen so much that uh, at one point I had a, like a holographic like print, you know, of Eddie Van Halen, like doing a pose like this. And it was like, Ooh, holographic signed. Yeah signed. It's been, you know, 30 years since I've seen it. I don't even know where it ended up. It's probably gone somewhere, but I had it for a while. And my kid, and, and when I was a kid, I loved it. I would just sit and stare at this. Like it wasn't even that big. It was this tiny little holograph picture that was signed. And I just hung it on my wall. It was like one thing, like big bear, empty wall. Just, nope. I'm going to hang my Eddie Van Halen, hang my Eddie Van Halen thing right there. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, you've been to you've been to Tahoe Tahoe Wabo. Yeah, Cabo Wabo. I used to eat there all the time. It's a good restaurant when I lived there. So, let's move on. Let's move on into uh, a little bit something else, shall we? I don't even have that much stuff lined up today for Tuesday, Bro Tuesday. But I do want to talk about Brad Brad Rudu. Brad Rudu, I'm convinced, is uh, some sort of uh, telepathic person. He predicted, he predict, he, I'm convinced he can see into the future. So I want to ask him about the future of vaping. <laughs> want to ask him about the future of vaping. We're going to do some good old fashioned uh, story time with Grim Green because this is a quick little, quick little read right here. But uh, Brad Rudu is a professor of medicine at the University of Louisville. That's Kentucky. He holds an endowed chair on the tobacco harm reduction research, and he is a member of the James Graham Brown Cancer Center at the, Unis at the University of Louisville. That's Kentucky. For the past 20 years, he's been involved in research and policy development regarding tobacco harm reduction. Uh, THR advocates acknowledge that there are millions of smokers who are unable or unwilling to quit with conventional cessation methods involving tobacco and nicotine 
abstinence, and we encourage them to use safer substitutes, use cigarette substitutes that are far safer. The guy's got a list of credentials. He's had stuff published all over the place and prestigic and prestigic. I just made up a new word. That's fine. Prestigious medical journals all over the place. He wrote a book called For Smokers Only, How Smokeless Tobacco Can Save Your Life by Brad Rudu. And we're going to read something here that is hopefully it blew me away. Blew me away, completely blew me away. And uh, I hope it blows you away in the same way that it blew me away. Zero friends, chilling bro. We're doing Tuesday, bro, Tuesday. I appreciate you being here. Yeah, Brad Rudu, uh, amazing human being. Kind Kind of just an amazing human being. So we're gonna read this and I want you to look at the date on this. Wednesday, December 4th, 2013. What? Yeah, 2013, the headline for the Centers for Disease Control September 5th press release was dire. E-cigarettes use, e-cigarette use more than doubles among U.S. middle and high school students from 2011 to 2012. What? The agency's shocker generated reams of coverage. USA Today, LA Times, Chicago Tribune, CBS News. In an earlier blog post, I criticized the CDC's media ploy for positioning e-cigarettes as a new childhood tobacco epidemic. He he used the word epidemic before Scott Gottlieb used the word epidemic in 2017. Brad Rudu, he was criticizing them in 2013. Don't worry. Some more Morty's mind blowers are still coming. Um, Based on additional research, I have uncovered serious flaws in the agency's analysis, errors and omissions that made the CDC's message more appealing to the media, but less conscionable in terms of public health. Criticisms of the CDC. Who who would have guessed it? Appreciate that super chat, damn it, man. Appreciate that super chat, damn it, man. Um, Analyzing. The 2012 National Youth Tobacco Survey, the data set the CDC used to generate its report, I discovered the falsehood of this key statement in the agency's press release. Altogether, in 2012, more than 1.78 million middle and high school students nationwide had tried e-cigarettes. This assertion was highlighted in most major media reports. In fact, the National Youth Tobacco Survey did not collect information on the number of students who had used e-cigarettes in 2012. Instead, the survey asked if students had ever tried e-cigarettes even just one time. That number, ever use, remember ever use, that number is 1.78 million. The only number in the survey that is applicable to 2012 is the 554,000 students who used an e-cigarette on at least one day in the past month. That is only 31% of the number wrongly reported by the CDC. Look, who can you trust anymore? Who who can you trust anymore? Who can you trust anymore? I feel like you can't trust the CDC anymore. And that's, you know, and I say this, probably way too much, probably way too much. But if I hadn't gone through and experienced the debacle that was Ivali firsthand, I would probably still be trusting the CDC. You know, it would be one of those, I I haven't never seen him do anything wrong. What's wrong with the CDC? Why do you guys hate on the CDC? Why are you criticizing the CDC? It's the CDC. They're a trusted health organization, damn it. But because we were there, I was there and we were there and we saw the CDC continuously lie about Ivali and continuously use scary and confusing sounding language and then focusing solely on this scary sounding language and 
convince, trying to convince people that it was nicotine vaping that was responsible for Evoli. I saw it happen firsthand and then it just kind of died down. And then now everybody thinks that vaping caused Evoli. And then the, you know, the higher ups in the CDC just pat themselves on the back, give each other awards going job well done. We really, <laughs> you know, we really handled that Evoli outbreak. I mean, flawlessly, right? If I hadn't been through that, I don't know if I would be as critical as the CDC as I am, but I did go through it. And so now I'm just hypercritical of the CDC, too, too hypercritical of the CDC. Another statement in the CDC release uh, is seriously misleading. The study also found that 76.3% of middle and high school students who used e-cigarettes within the past 30 days also smoked conventional cigarettes in the same period. That statement implies that 24% of e-cigarette users were not smokers and gives the distinct impression that e-cigarettes are emerging as a first use tobacco product, initiating, initiating, if you will. What do you have to say, Rising Phoenix Vapory? Buy Nico a bone. Much love from all of us here at the Rising Phoenix Vapory. I, look, I appreciate that. We, Nico is, Nico is excessively, excessively spoiled. I'll t I'll t after we read that, I'll tell you how excessively spoiled Nico is. She gets treats all the time. After lunch, she gets after lunch treats. After dinner, she gets after dinner treats. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. I appreciate that, Rising Phoenix Vapory. Uh, Limo, break the ice. Yeah, getting ready to break the ice. Feels like time is standing still. You know, if you know, if you know, then you know. Not so fast. Back to Rudu. The National Youth Tobacco Survey also measured other forms of tobacco use, including smokeless tobacco, cigars, pipes, hookah, snus, and dissolvable tobacco. In addition to the 76.3% of e-cig users who were, concurrent, who were concurrent cigarette smokers, another 12.9% were using other tobacco products. That means the percentage of e-cigarette users who weren't using any other tobacco products was only 10.8%, a tiny fraction. Of this group, about half have ever tried cigarette smoking, even one or two puffs. Fractions of fractions, misleading, scary sounding words, focusing on the scariest sounding data. Look, I don't need to tell you. I saw Michelle Mitten in here. She knows, <laughs> she knows what I'm talking about. I'm just lifting all this from her playbook. There is another feature of this and other federal surveys that you need to understand. The numbers that the CDC reports, example, 1.78 million, are not actual counts, but are national estimates based on a complex sampling strategy. This is not necessarily a problem, but it provides needed context, especially when the number of survey respondents is small. For example, the total number of youths in the survey who used an e-cigarette in the past 30 days was 500. The number of vapors who did not use any tobacco product nor had ever tried smoking was around 20. The bottom line, among all middle and high school e-cigarette users, only 10.8% were not currently using any other tobacco product and half of those had tried to smoke it, smoke in the past. CDC director Tom Friedstein, I don't know if he's still the CDC director. I'm not up on my CDC directors. I've never had to memorize so many people's names in my life. CDC Director Tom may wish to use his position as a bully pulpit to oppose e-cigarette use, but abusing the facts is inexcusable. In a future post, I'll discuss, discuss, I'll discuss other key findings from the National Youth Tobacco Survey that were omitted by the CDC. In fact, if we look over here, there's a part two. Now, we might talk about part two next week, but if you want to go and read ahead and read Rudu's... Uh, Tobacco Truth blog spot. You can definitely do that. Read ahead. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna hold it against you. I'm not gonna hold it against you. But this is, you know, this is pretty par for the course as far as information. We don't get all the information. Uh, CDC is supposed to be releasing more data points from the 2020 National Youth Tobacco Survey. I think as early as this month. I think. I'm not sure. 
I, I've heard October, don't really know. And even then, we don't necessarily know, you, you know, what information, what information we're going to get at all in any capacity. So, like I said, I love Brad Rode. I'll post a link down in the description uh, where you can read his blog. Uh, I'll try to, you know, I'll track down his Twitter. I'll put his Twitter in the description as well because, uh, He's a smart guy and he's worth the follow. If you're in into this space on Twitter, you should definitely uh should definitely give him a follow. I thought I saw another super chat in there. Chelsinator94 in the process of passing a kidney stone. What? Still watching my favorite vape man. Much love. Much love to you because kidney stones are the the worst. Kidney stones are the worst thing on earth. They're actually the worst thing on earth. Forget about forget about smoking, COPD, lung cancer, emphysema, death. Forget about all that. Kidney stones. We need to ban kidney stones. We need to, you know, it would help kidney stones if we banned sodas. Banning sodas and ban ban sodas, ban salt, ban anything that can lead to a kidney stone, so that we can eventually, you know. Uh, is there a campaign for kidney stone free kids? Can we invent it? Much love to you. I hope you get through it. It's not, uh, it's not, uh, oh, Michelle Mitten's telling me in chat, uh, retired a couple years back. Okay. I'll have to get up to date with who all's in the CDC. I know, <coughs> pardon me. Let me stay hydrated. I know just recently they kind of all patted each other on the back and gave some awards to each other about how they handled the volley. And I remember reading a bunch of names and I thought that one was in there, but meh. Yeah, worst pain. Worst pain, Zach's Worst pain. Worst pain I've ever felt in my life. But uh, here, let's track down Brad. Uh, there he is. Ah. <sighs> Brad Rudu, let's get his Twitter over here. I'll post a link uh, in the description and in the chat boosh right there. Brad Rudu, I'd like to read his book. And you know, I say that, but really I'm not a big book reader. I've got two books over here that the reason that they're here and like on display right next to my Klingon, Michelle Mitten. Yeah, that's a Klingon. You want to see it? I'm just kidding. I have these two books that I still need to read. Yeah, the, the Jacob Greer, The Rediscovery of Tobacco. And then I got this one from Logan Exhales on Liberty and Drugs. Both of the, this one even has a bookmark on it. Like, look, I gave this a good old college try. I started reading it and got far enough that I felt, what page is this? 11. I felt like 11 pages in. I'm like, nope, that's good enough for now. You know, I'll put a bookmark there so I remember. I'd like to read his book. I, I just wish I had time to read anything or that I wasn't dyslexic, you know. If I was dis if I wasn't dyslexic, it would be a lot easier to read. That's kind of what I'm uh that's kind of what I'm blaming it on. Anyway, you had your kidney stones due to rapid weight loss? Look, Miller Man Chris, ban it. Ban rapid weight loss. Campaign for kidney stone <laughs> The campaign for kidney stone free kids. I love that. I love the crap out of this. Um, I'm not going to spend too much time. Hang on. There was another super chat here. M. Gray. Uh, M. Gray in with the super chat says, I almost worked for the canvassing company that collected that data. I wasn't chosen, but I told the interviewer I vaped and was for harm reduction. Really? You... Wow, uh, I find that interesting. That is really interesting. That's really interesting. I'd like to talk to you more, M. Gray. Do you think you weren't chosen because you, you, you had mentioned vaping? Or do you think that maybe anybody, I don't know, anybody that smoked or vaped wasn't like, you know, that was a prerequisite. That was like a disqualifier. That was like a disqualifier. Um, before we move any, any further, there has been someone in the chat, I can't, Who's, who was it? Tony? Was it Tony? There was someone in the chat that kept asking about type, John. Okay, John. John keeps asking about the type two. Here's a little bit of type two news while we're on Tuesday, bro, Tuesday, and we're talking about news, okay? Oh, wait, we got Michelle Minton. As a nutritionist, I can tell you 
If uh, if you ban salt, way more people would die than from COVID. Okay, well, that might be true, but they won't have kidney stones, Michelle Minton. Look, I don't have time to sit and think of the unintended consequences of my moral crusade, okay? I just want to ban kidney stones, campaign for against kidney stones for kids. I don't have the time to 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 think about the unintended consequences, okay? I'm on a moral crusade here. I have to stay the course. <laughs> I don't have time to think about facts and things like that. Type two updates for John so I can get this out of the way. There are type two RTAs in the United States right now. There I said it. Type two RTAs in the United States right now, okay? They exist. Half of the batch has been shipped. We're waiting for other parts to ship to other people. Uh, there is a photographer as we speak right now with type two RTAs in their hot little hands and they're taking all sorts of sexy pictures for social media and for the Instagrams and for your Instagram stories, you know. So they exist. It's in the United States right now. It, it, we're, we're closer. We have close. We are closer than we have ever been. We are closer than we have ever been to the release, to the release of the type two RTA. You, M. Gray says, uh, yeah, because of vaping, it was laid out that it was only uh, tobacco. Oh, interesting. Oh, that's very interesting. Let's ban banning things. Could you be anti-prohibition, but be for a prohibition on prohibiting things? Maybe. I don't know. Here's something I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on, but I just wanted to throw out there as well. I'm going to leave this as an article for you guys to read because you should be reading Filter Mag anyway. But this is, uh, you know, this is a story on the uh, the most recent National Youth Tobacco Survey data. Youth vaping declines, but the CDC clings to its epidemic narrative. Yeah, epidemic narrative. It's unbelievable to me. And I hate that the CDC does this percentages of percentages things. You know, they say things like 19% of high school students are vaping and 38% of high school vapors use disposables. Well, I mean, that's accurate. That's technically the truth, but that's a percentage of a percentage. So it's it's 38% of that 19%. So it's like 7 percent, you know, you're getting into, you know, fractions of, of, of percentages here, especially when you get into like middle school, uh, e-cigarette youth use, it's like 0.8, percent are, are regular users than they were smokers before they started vaping. So, uh, this is a really interesting article. It kind of lays it all out there on what's happening with vaping and the youth numbers going down. It's a little critical of it as it should be. They got people like Clive Bates in here being critical of this information and the of the CDC and things like this and the such as. So I'm going to post a link to that. Boosh, it's in the chat right there. Boosh, I'll have a link down in the description. I'll have a link down in the description as well. Um, what else were we here to talk about? You want to talk about uh, some nicotine and things like that? You want to talk about nicotine a little bit? You want to talk about Van Halen some more? Look, I'm open. I'm open if you want to talk about Van Halen, but we should probably talk about vaping. I do also want to throw this out there again, just because it's such a freaking great, a uh, great article from NYU. Uh, I, you know, this got very little coverage and it's crazy to me that things like this can exist and nobody picks up on it. But like, you know, but like Michelle Minton, like we were talking about on our Tuesday, bro, Tuesday, they'll pick, they'll pick up the tiniest little study of like 50 people and they'll extrapolate this and say, vaping is, you know, it's literally killing children, literally killing children based on new science and new study. And then we have this science from NYU talking about disseminating the same information from the from the CDC coming to the conclusion that hey most young people don't vape and even fewer vape regularly 
So I'd like to throw this out there again. We're not going to do any uh, story time with Grim Green, although this would be a nice little read. And just as a heads up, Michelle, there's another paper you did that I'm going to turn into like a, uh, a spoken word audio book. <laughs> like another spoken word audio book. Just as a heads up to you. And hopefully you give me uh, permission to do that. I cannot believe Eddie Van Halen is dead. I keep clicking on this tab and it really kind of really bums me out. So uh, let's talk about this real quick. One thing that I did recently, about a month ago, now that I think about it, was uh, had a little survey. I put a little survey out there on uh, on YouTube. It's okay. New Wave Dave is here. We can do the uh, we can do the nicotine poll now. And what did I post? What did the survey actually say? Hang on. This always takes me a hot second because I have two things to uh, to get organized here. It says, uh, oh yeah, this was when I took the week off from streaming when I had my kidney uh, stone removal type of thing. I said, but always, but as always, I like to ask a question. What nick level do you generally use to stay off of combustible cigarettes? Feel free to also mention what type of setup you also generally use, i.e. sub tank, RDA, I AIO, uh, pod, mod, pod. The more people that answer, the better. Thanks for understanding. Had 7,000 people get down on this survey. Really appreciate it. If you see me post a survey on YouTube, um, do do it. That would really help. That would really help me out a lot. Speaking of what would really help me out a lot, if you're here right now, just hit that like button. Yeah, you know, even if you're away from. Okay, thank you, Michelle Minton. Even if you're away from your computer, just come back over. Just hit that like button. If you're on your phone, just hit the like button. Appreciate that. But I did this poll, and I realized after doing this poll that not everybody. Not everybody can fit into one of these categories, right? So I did 50 milligram plus. 5% of the 7,000 fell in there. 20 to 30 milligram. I was surprised 7% of the, of, the, of the respondents fell into that category. 12 to 18 milligram, 11% of respondents fell into that category. And overwhelming, most popular by far, 74% three to six milligram. Uh, and in, in 2020, that doesn't, uh, that doesn't surprise me at all. If I had done this survey, if we had done this survey, let's say in 2012, 2011, that 12 to 18 milligram, it would have been off the charts. Everybody was vaping 18 milligram. Literally everybody. I was vaping 18 milligram. Literally everybody was vaping 18 milligram. Vaping three milligram was like unheard of. It was just something nobody did. It was all mouth to lung. It was all these old like cartomizers and joy tech atomizers. And the only reason that I can even speak comfortably to this is at that time in 2013, 2012, 2013, I had liquid company. We had an amber juice. And when we went to shows, when we went to vape shows, like when we went to vape bash in, in Chicago, we would, uh, yeah, 18, Janine, yeah, exactly. 24 milligram for New Wave Dave. When we, uh, in 2012, part-time vapor was on 36 milligram. Yeah, that's just the way it was. And when we went to vape shows like Vape Bash in Chicago, and we set up our little table. We we stocked up. We brought so much 18 and 24 milligram. It was crazy. We brought maybe, I don't know, 10 or 12 bottles of three milligram and then hundreds of bottles of 18 milligram. And you could almost just, it, it was like nobody even asked for anything lower. If someone walked up to the table and was like, oh, I want to get, uh, can I get a bottle of the Cardamator Crush and the Mistress? I'd turn around and just instinctively go for the 18 milligram. And as I'm grabbing it out, they're like, oh, 18 milligram. And I'm like, yeah, I, I mean, I already know. Yes, of course it's 18 milligram. Everybody, everybody here is vaping 18 milligram. But over time, it looks like, it looks like we've kind of nestled down into like three, six territory. Uh, what I was surprised by was the zero Nick being at 4% of the respondents and 50 milligram plus being at 5% of the respondents. That means almost as many people vape zero Nick as vape 50 milligram. It's just really interesting. And there were a lot of really great responses to this. There were actually 666 responses to this. The responses of the beast 
comments of the beast. I don't have any, uh, I don't have any hydro homies, uh, you know, bumpers for, for Tuesday, bro. Tuesday. I just don't, I just drink. I just drink when I get thirsty. Uh, 666 respondents. And so I went through and I picked out uh, like a few cool ones that I thought were kind of unique or interesting. Uh, let me get the first one up here. I'm sorry. This is going to take me one second. This is maybe the, the most popular, most upvoted one on there. But a fellow named Dwayne said, the 50 plus was my vote because when it all comes down to it, high nick pods and disposables are what keep me the most away from cigarettes. Uh, I usually vape three milligram in a mech or squonk alongside 12 milligram freebase nick in my K-Fun. Going like most vapors, uh, going like most vapors, I have a few different setups really, so I don't know how much the 50 plus vote works for me. They all work together as a collection for me to keep vaping, getting a variety than two different packs could ever offer. And that seemed to be like a, you know, an overwhelming theme, an overwhelming, you know, uh, answer to this question was, well, I don't just use three milligram. I don't just use six milligram. I don't just use 12 milligram. Vapors today, myself included, I fall into this bucket. I use a variety of different nicotine levels depending on where I'm at during the day, even where I am in my house. Like if I'm laying in bed and I don't want to just cloud chase in my bedroom when, you know, while my wife's trying to sleep, I'm watching, you know, Simpsons reruns. I don't want to set off the smoke detector. I don't just sit in bed with a mech mod and drip. No, I get maybe something like this. Maybe something a little guy like this with six milligram in it. So I vape a little bit less, maybe even a little mouth to lung bangy guy like this with 12 milligram in it so that I vape even less and I can just enjoy a little bit of a mouth to lung laying in bed. If I go out in, in, in public, like remember going out in public, <laughs> if I go out in public, chances are I would have something like uh, the rise bar, like with a 50 milligram plus salt in it so that. I didn't have to sit there and chain vape something to be satisfied. I could just, you know, one or two. It's whatever. One or two little puffs, that's fine. It's all good. In fact, when we were in uh, New York a number of years ago, a number of years ago, uh, Casey had only brought, what did she bring? Hexome and a dripper or something like that. And we're walking around the streets of New York City and we're just like, this is not working. A Hexome and a dripper for walking around New York does not work. So we just stopped at a little bodega and got a jewel with some mango pods. Boom, roasted. Solution. Solution. And that seems to be like the overwhelming thing is people are really variable uh, on their nicotine levels. Had, a, had one person here go, just went by the name Rugly. <laughs> which I think is great. Let me, where can, I can't find this. Rugly. I thought his name was Rugly. Rugly. Yeah, there he is. Rugly. Rugly juice recipes. He said, uh, I use between zero and 1.5 milligram. I answered zero because three milligram is too much. Three milligram is just too much for some people. And that's one of the really great things about vaping, in my opinion, is it's up to the user to decide how much nicotine do you think you need? How much? Try 50. Too much? All right. Well, we got something for you. Here, try the, Try 20. Still too much. Okay. Here, we got, we got 12. Oh, you like 12? Okay, 12. Oh, you want to go down some more? That's okay. We have six right here. You want to go down even further than that? Here, you're getting three. Even for... One and a half, maybe. Oh, now you want to go back up? Here's here's some 12. Anything to keep you off of cigarettes, you can adjust your nicotine level however you feel that you need to in order to be satisfied by it. Do I have to put the nicotine warning up here if I'm just talking about nicotine? I feel like that's a, I feel like that's a weird thing to do. I guess I have been vaping it. Uh, I had another interesting comment here from uh, Daniel. He just said, uh, this was really interesting to me. K-Fun Prime with nine milligram on a Danny box. 
Flavor Pier and the mod is just awesome. Thanks for what you do. Get well soon. I appreciate that, Daniel. I did get well soon. Nine milligram, though, is... That's really interesting to me. Nine milligram is just such a foreign concept to me because I don't DIY. All I do is commercial juice. So unless it comes in a nine milligram, chances are I'm not ever going to vape a nine milligram. But when I think of it, there was someone else who had a nine milligram here. Yeah, William. William said the same thing. Nine milligram on my K-Fun light. Yeah, he mixes his own. Nine milligram. And I think about it and I think, man, nine milligram I think would be perfect because I like 12. But honestly, right now, sometimes 12 feels a little bit too much depending on the flavors that are in it. Six milligram is pretty satisfying. I had six milligram in my in my Caliburn G with a dead battery. Fairly satisfying, but I feel like a nine, like a nine milligram would just be like that perfect creamy middle part of the curve that I think would be uh, really satisfying. So basically what I'm trying to say is I'm gonna try on some nine milligram. I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna DIY me some, some some liquid someday. Look, I'll try to do it soon. Dude Duderson had another comment here. Similar path. He says, uh, sorry I couldn't vote as I'm down to 1.5 milligram after four years of vaping. RDAs all the time on a mech, regulated at home, and on a cheeky squonky donkey while I'm at work driving. Yeah, people go low on their nicotine. You know, people go one point, you know, 1.5, 3 milligram, 1.5. Milligram, I've seen some people vaping 0.5 milligram. And the it's, it's uh, I feel like it's a little bit, I don't know, not, I'm trying to not paint this in a negative light. It's not misleading, right, to say that you have 1.5 milligram because that's the content of your e-liquid. But I feel like there needs to be a distinction between, so like I have 20 milligram right now in this me pod. 20 milligram, real satisfying. And, and that's what happens, 20 milligram. The volume of vapor is very, very low. I have three milligram in this Vaporesso thing that I just got. The fours, tell me what you think that looks like. Certainly doesn't, does not look like anything from Geek Vape, does it? Doesn't look like they're trying to get into Geek Vape's market share at all. Three milligram in this, but when you hit a sub tank, the volume of vapor is quadruple the amount that you would get from a 20 milligram salt nick inside of a me pod. Which is why I think cloud chasing or cloud surfing as, as I've heard some people call it, which I like that so much more. I think that's just more conducive to lower nicotine because you're inhaling so much more vapor that it could, I mean, look, there's no science to back this up. This is pure postulation on my part. I'm not a doctor or a scientist. But there could be the argument made that when you vape three milligram out of a cloud chasey, cloud surfy type of setup, that you're getting the equivalent of something much, much higher just because of the, the sheer volume of vapor that's going into your mouth hole. I mean, I feel like I'm not too far off on that. This needs way more power, bro. Problem is, it's only single 18650. And that kind of sucks. Anyway, that's kind of where I, well, that's kind of where I think about it because I've done some rudimentary science on my own where when I wake up first thing in the morning, I never like vape right away. I'm not, I don't reach over on my nightstand and just look, oh, vape. First thing I do is vape. I get up, I, you know, I, I check Twitter. I, I go use the restroom, you know, I, I'll get dressed. I'll put on all my accoutrements and my hat and my glasses, you know, my identity. And then I'll have a vape. And if that first vape in the morning is a pod, I get like that Nick buzz, like, right away, right away, three, two or three drags in, Nick buzz, and it, and it feels great, and I go, oh, nicotine, and it feels great 
Alternatively, if my first vape in the morning is from a cloud chasey setup and I take like five to six really good rips on a cloud chasey setup first thing in the morning, I'll still get some of that like Nick buzz, which regularly during a cloud chasing setup, even if I'm using it all day long, even if I'm sitting in the living room, just fogging out with the Batman, (laughs) just fogging out like crazy. I don't get that Nick buzz, but early in the morning I do. And I think the, again, I'm going to just repeating myself right now. I think the volume of vapor is giving you more nicotine than you think. If you're down to 1.5 milligram, you might be getting a little bit more than that. If you're down to three milligram in cloud chasing, you might be getting a little bit more to that. Temperature could play a role in it. I have no idea. It was just an interesting, it was just something interesting I was was kind of thinking about today. I had another response here from Anthony. I don't know why I said his name like that. Anthony, he said, uh, running a rebirth RDA with a dual Triple core fuse clapped in on my top side, three milligram. Have been stopped smoking almost a month now. So Anthony started with three milligram. Started with three milligram, which again, kind of plays back into the volume of vapor to, in order to satisfy you with nicotine. Throughout, throughout all of 2015 and all of 2016, cloud chasing was just the king. Pods were not even a, a, a glint on the horizon. Pods were, were nothing back then. Everybody was cloud chasing. And there were hundreds of smokers that I, that I knew, and I mean, not knew personally, but had talked to through Grim Green, through emails at vape shows that had tried sigalikes and stuff in the past, even with higher nicotine content, but they said they couldn't quit smoking until they got their, you know, quad core aliens on a dripper at, you know, on a stacked tube mech and vaped and dripped three milligram. Like that's when they were finally able to quit. And that's when, you know, I kind of realized, oh, cloud chasing, this isn't just a big, this isn't just for show. You know, we're not just doing cloud comps for the fun of it. There are people who legitimately were unable to quit with a SIGA-like and were only able to quit until they got like three or six milligram nicotine in a sub tank. Just very interesting. Had another guy here, uh, gun, Soft Gun Ruler. Where'd you go, Mr. Soft Gun? Here he is. Soft Gun Ruler had to say this, RDA or RTA with zero nick because I was never addicted to nicotine in the first place. I just loved the way that the act of smoking made me feel so relaxed and chilled out like a breath of fresh air in a busy world congested by internet nagging and deadlines. Ironically, this breath of fresh air was everything but fresh air. Cigars for me mostly, not usually cigarettes, but now I can enjoy the same sensation, but with better flavor and with much less harm. Cigar smokers, cigar smokers. That's very interesting. I kind of sometimes, not often, but I'll sometimes treat a really airy open mouth to lung as a cigar. You just mouth it, you know? Maybe do a little French inhale there. Zero nicotine. There's so much more to vaping and smoking than just nicotine. So much more to it. In fact, we're going to talk about that in just one second. I can't pronounce this person's name. I'm not even going to try to. It just looks like 18 consonants all in a a row. Eight milligram. Another interesting nicotine level. Eight milligram in a mouth to lung daily driver. Three milligram in the dead rabbit for occasional. There you go cloud surfing. So another interesting, you know, eight milligrams sometimes, three milligrams sometimes. I feel like that's just how vaping works now. You know, before it used to be, well, if you're a smoker, you're going to need the 50 milligram. You're going to need it. And then once you get off of combustibles, then you can kind of work your way down. And it seems to be now just use, use whatever satisfies you, you know, Sometimes it's three milligrams, sometimes it's 12 milligrams, sometimes it's 1.5, sometimes it's 50, sometimes it's 20. Whatever satisfies you, that's what you get to use. 
because it's up to the user to decide user to decide not the government uh we had a william here where did uh where did william end up william here oh yeah this was another one oh, i already showed you this one nine milligram on the k fun yeah that's crazy nine milligram eight milligram i'm gonna have to start diying if i want to get some of these uh if I want to get some of these interesting nicotine levels, because I'd love to be able to just, I don't know. You know what? I take that back. I don't want one just nicotine level. I want, I want to try all of them, and I want to decide for myself which and how much nicotine I'm going to use. I had one here from Matt as well, a little bit of an old school vapor. I just wanted to add something. I used 18 milligram to initially get off the cigs. I started vaping days after the first MVP was released. I feel old now. Well, you should feel old now. I feel old now because I I used 36 milligram free base to get off of combustibles. I only stuck with 36 milligram free base for about two weeks, maybe three weeks because the throat hit that I was getting was just, it was just debilitating. Like I would take a rip and just, you know, you pull it in your mouth, you, you, you lung it down and that throat hit that happened would just like knock me into the ground. It was just so intense. What I used to call way back in the day, if anybody's been watching since 2009, which look, I don't know, maybe I used to say reckless, love a good reckless throat hit, just reckless, wrecked my throat. I, after two weeks, two or three weeks, I went down to 24 spent a few months at 24, finally went down to 18, dabbled around in 12 milligram country, but really 18 until cloud chasing arrived was like, that was it. And then I went from 18 to three and, th and that's it. That's my whole nicotine story. Uh, new wave Dave in with the super chat, not only about volume, the hotter the vapor, the easier your body can absorb the nicotine. Is this true new wave Dave? Do you have science for this? Hang on, do you have science for this? I'm gonna need I'm gonna need a a, a reference there, New Wave Dave, because I I'm I'm fascinated by that. I'm fascinated by the idea of that that the warmer that the vapor is, the easier it is to absorb into your body. Do we have any MDs in the house that can uh, verify for that? In honor of that hotter vapor, I'll, I'm gonna hit my series. I can do my own science. Right? I'll do my own science. I'll have a cloud chasing setup like this with a really cool vapor. Cold. Cool vapor. And then I can have a cloud chasing setup like this, that series that is fucking literally the warmest vape I've ever had in my life. I'll do the early morning test again. I'll report back my findings, New Wave Dave. Do you want to be part of my study? It's called the H hot vape, the HVGN study. The hot vape grim green nicotine study. The HVGGNS. The HVGGNS study. It's happening now. I have two participants, just me and New Wave Dave. That's it. But if you want to be a part of it, I would encourage you just go to the website NVGGNS dot edu um, that's not a website for british eyes only remember nine south yeah see that's i completely agree with you for british eyes only in the super chat says remember nine south they did zero two four and six and i love that i think that's the best way to do it i don't know how we ended up on this three six twelve eighteen train i don't know where that came from but i wish we had gotten on the two four six <laughs> you know what i mean because then you could even go Two four six eight, you know, you could go two four six eight, and I think that would be a nice variety of nicotine levels. You know, who else did that for British Eyes? It wasn't just Nine South uh, Vapor Treats from Local Vape did that for a while. Two four six, and for a real hot minute, I didn't like any of the liquids that Dwayne was doing back then. For a hot minute, there was one like uh, Anarchist Purple that tasted like a uh, purple purple. It tasted like purple. It tasted like purple bubble gum, like like uh, grape grape bubble gum. I was on that four milligram for a while, and I really really liked it. 
I really, really liked it. That's a good point. Millerman Chris, nine is just a 12 and a six missed together. No DIY needed, Nick. Uh, if it's mixed together, that's DIY, Millerman Chris. <laughs> that's DIY. You're mixing it yourself. You're literally doing it yourself. That's what DIY stands for. You're mixing it, doing it yourself. <laughs> that's actually the definition of DIY. Uh, I'm going to go. I had a couple more of these uh, interesting nicotine comments here. Maureen. Maureen left a comment and said this. I started out using six milligram, then three milligram Nick within two months of vaping. I began using the Aspire Cleto. Uh, smoke TF8 RTAs. My first mod was a Lost Vape Therion, DNA 75C. Now she uses a Squonker. Hopes this helps someone vape. Stay safe, everyone, especially you, Nick. The, 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 the inclination when you first get into vaping is, at least my first inclination was lowering your nicotine. Like that's the first thing you think about, right? Lower your nicotine. You start at an 18, you already start thinking, well, maybe I'll get down to a 12. You know, you're at a three, you start considering, well, maybe I'll try a 1.5. You're at a 1.5, you start considering a, a 0.5 or a zero. I feel like the natural progression of vaping is just to to go down, just to drop drop your nicotine as uh, not necessarily as quickly as you can, but it just seems to be the goal of most everybody. But the thing is, again, it's the great thing about vaping. You don't have to. You don't, you don't have to. Had another comment here from Gunner. Started out eight years ago at 24 milligram strength, 50-50 PGVG mix. Uh, Stardust Clearomizer using an Ego Twist. Ugh, those were rough days, Gunner. About a year in, I started building my own coils and started experimenting with higher VG liquids. And now I'll use our RTAs and RDAs with dual fuse Clapton coils, max VG liquids in the three to six milligram strength. Yep, keeps me perfectly satisfied. And if the future data from the HVGGNS study that's going on, uh, the warmer vapor might actually help you absorb it a little bit, uh, a little bit more here. Um, I just have a few more of these. Rhett Falls, Rhett Falls made an excellent, excellent point. This is, this is, this is the. This is just an excellent point. Rep Falls says, a uh, little over a year at three milligram, but since I've started making my own juice, I've titrated, fancy word, down to 1%. I believe finding one's personal favorite flavor is far more conducive to quitting smoking than nicotine levels. Yes. I, I am a firm, firm, f I mean, couldn't be more firm, like the most firm you know, like Stonehenge firm, just the firmest firm that you can be that flavors are way, way more critical to continuing vaping and, and, and distancing yourself from tobacco than just the nicotine level. Because if it was just the nicotine level, we could all be vaping unflavored. It just, just tastes like nothing. Just tastes like a little bit of soapy VG flavor and just 50 milligrams. That's why it kills me when Jerome Adams you know, our Surgeon General, the Doctor of America, says things like, well, I just don't understand, you know. Why can't a vapor just use a tobacco flavor? You were vaping tobacco cigarettes. Why can't you just use a tobacco vape flavor and get the nicotine that you need? Because it's not just about nicotine. It's about feeling satisfied. And there are times, even when my wife, Casey, when her favorite juice, when she stopped vaping it and needed to find a new favorite juice, she was really like struggling. Like, oh, I don't like this. Oh, I don't like this. And you know, God, I might stick with this. It wasn't until own boys mango that was finally like, okay, here you go. Here's your new all day vape. She's a one liquid type of gal. And that's the liquid that she vapes flavor critical and flavors, man, they're going to be the hardest to defend. They're going to be the hardest to defend. Uh, Michael in with the super chat. Very gracious of you. I appreciate that. Nick, love your streams, but sadly, I'm almost never able to watch them live since I'm in, oh, he's in Switzerland. Thanks for all you do. Have a great day. Thank you, Michael, for stopping by from Switzerland. That is very, very cool of you, Michael. Shout out to all my vape fam in Switzerland. Keep being fucking awesome. Like, who doesn't love Switzerland? Love, I love me some Switzerland. Uh, New Wave Dave. Can't drop a link in the chat, but I'll send it via Instagram. Oh, he's already got the science? No. This 
HBGGNS uh, NS study is going much better than I thought uh, than I ever than I ever thought it could. Didn't even need any uh, federal funding or anything like that. Uh, GTFO, see what I did there? GTFOH had to say 10 milligram salt nick mouth to lung RTA on a regulated device at 20 to 25 watts is my regular setup for years now. When I was on free base, three to six milligram at a high wattage, I couldn't completely quit cigarettes. Again, there's no rules in vaping, man. If three to six milligram isn't working for you, you can try a mouth to lung with higher nick. You could try a restricted lung with higher nick. We have so many different technologies and so many different ways to vapes and, and, and pods and mod pods and drippers and tanks and mouth to lung and whatever you need. We can provide it for whatever you need. Not not even include nicotine. Whatever nicotine you need, we can do it. Uh, I had this one. This one just says Lindsay. Yes. So I have a feeling this is I have a feeling this is a good one. We're getting down to the end here. Lindsay S says, I vape all different setups, having a variety of ways to vape, different strengths of nicotine, and 100% the vast variety of flavors are what keep me off of traditional combustible cigarettes. Mostly I vape three milligram, but occasionally I will vape six to 12. And if I use salt nick, 30 to 50 milligram nicotine, but only if I've, oh, but only if I ever get an urge to smoke a cigarette. When salt nick first came out, I was against having that high milligram of nicotine. But now that I have tried it, I see how high nicotine is more effective to help some people quit smoking. My favorite way to vape is with an RDA. I love the flavor. If you, uh, you don't have to keep buying coils as much, and I love that I can build my own. Vaping is a passion of mine. Not only was it the only thing that worked to get me off of cigarettes, but it gave me a hobby and an amazing community of wonderful people and absolutely has saved my life. Yes, Lindsay. Lindsay gets it. I don't know what to say. Shout out, huge shout out to Lindsay S. for leaving that comment. Um, absolutely. 100%ly. I'm glad you came around to high Nick. And I was like, you know... A high nicotine, you know, I was for a long time, I thought this is, this is unnecessary. This is ridiculous. You know, I was angry at Juul. I was angry at these, at companies releasing high nicotine stuff. I kept saying it's so unnecessary. You know, I quit with 18 milligram. I, you don't need 50 milligram nicotine. That's excessive. And I was on this side. And now in retrospect, I just think, wow, I used to be a schmuck and I'm glad I'm not a schmuck anymore because I get it. You have to meet people where they're at and some people need 50 milligram nicotine. Not everybody, but the ones that do, they do. And you can't take that away from them. You just can't. So uh, lastly, the last uh, nicotine story that I wanted to share with you. Are you still here, Southern Comfort? Well, this is my subscriber uh, we don't always agree on everything, but damn it, he's my boy. It's Southern Comfort. Just take a look at him with his mighty beard and his Misfits t-shirt. It honestly looks like we, if we, we had met at any other time, we'd just hang out. We'd just be friends. But Southern Comfort, he sent me uh, he sent me a little bit of like a nicotine story, I guess. And uh, it, it was via email. So I think we're going to end here with Southern Comfort saying, there's no way to answer this for me specifically. Uh, I either mix equal parts of three milligram and zero milligram to get 1.5 nick or pour two zero nick 60 mil bottles into a 120 mil chubby and mix in a black sapphire nick tube that also makes 1.5 nick. I started with a 50 milligram fixed pod and six milligrams in a mod. Started dripping, moved down to three milligram, cranked my wattage way up in regulated mods and got into series mods and moved my nick down to 1.5. So 1.5 nick does the trick. That rhymes and you know it rhymes. There's my answer. I bet nobody else answers with a story. Included a picture of myself. Feel free to share the pic and story with whoever you want. Well, it's getting shared right now. That's Mr. Southern Comfort, 1.5 uh, milligram nicotine right there. And that kind of, look, New Wave Dave, that kind of goes along with this warmer vapor uh, gets absorbed faster because as soon as Mr. Southern Comfort went from 
three milligram to 1.5 milligram on a series or cranking the wattage way up, making that warm, warm vape, he could lower his nicotine even further. Does that mean you could have like a fraction of a percent? Like if you were vaping series with like a 0.3 milligram nicotine that you could be satisfied by that, I guarantee you that there are people that, that will be satisfied by that. Maybe they are right now. I just don't know them yet and they didn't comment on my post. Southern Comfort in with the super chat. Uh, need to be sharper when defining flavors. Only tobacco flavors for vapors is like giving an alcoholic only whiskey flavored water. Yes, 8,000%, 10,000%. Do you want an alcoholic to be forced to drink only whiskey flavored water? No, uh, uh, of course not. Of course not. That is ridiculous. In fact, here, there's a thing that exists now, and we have a bottle of it, but it is non-alcoholic gin. Yeah, and the whole marketing campaign behind it is kind of this whole, when you want to drink, but you don't want to drink. You know, it's like, when you want to have a drink in the afternoon, but you don't necessarily want to get tipsy or sloshed, here, have some non-alcoholic gin. They have non, Heineken is pushing these non-alcoholic Heinekens. Like, ah, oh, well, it's for those times when you want to have a beer, but you don't really want to have like a beer, beer. Have a Heineken, fucking no alcohol Heineken, and you can still drink a beer. I think it's ridiculous that we have so wholeheartedly embraced alcohol and then zero alcohol, alcohol, but nicotine divorced from tobacco oh that's 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 the worst shit ever you're still smoking people how many people have told you that you're still smoking imagine if you told that someone drinking a heineken's oh you're still drinking beer that's still beer you can't drink beer during the day there's no alcohol in it it doesn't matter still beer still beer joseph that's very gracious of you vaping helped me quit smoking ah but so what i know Technically, yes, but so what? Vaping helped me quit smoking. Vaping and flavors and nicotine and the community is what helped me quit smoking. Without all of those things, I would have been lost, just lost, you know? And that's one of the reasons I, I started this whole YouTube is I, I don't want people to feel lost. Like someone's feeling lost, send them over here. I'll, we'll try to get them sorted out because I hated feeling lost. I hated feeling like, you know, I'd go to these weird Chinese websites and I'd be looking at, you know, my girlfriend at the time, Kelsey, and I'm thinking, I'm going to order some batteries. They sell liquid. You know, do you think I need liquid? What do you think the liquid's for? This is a clove liquid. This one is an, uh, this one just says RY3. What do you think that means? I can get them in different strengths. This one says 36 milligram RY3. Do you think I need to buy this? I, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. And I just hated feeling lost. And without the community constantly being there to answer questions, which I had loads of questions at the beginning. Everybody does, right? You go on any forum, you go on the, the electronic cigarette subreddit, you go on the vaping subreddit, people still, you know, will show up there and say, uh, why, you know, my sub tank tastes like a burnt hair. What, like what's causing that? And people just jump in and help. And that the community aspect of it, the flavor of it, the, the, the nicotine, that's what helps. That's what helps at the end of the day. And that's why this, this community, it's just so how it just so means so much to me because when I was lost, uh, I'm, I'm getting to sound a little religious now and I'm not meaning to, but I'm a firm believer in proselytizing. And when I was lost, the, the, the vape community helped me find my way and quit smoking. And that's why I started this YouTube tangent, Southern comfort. Nice. Yeah, bro. I, you know, I was saving it. You probably thought that it was lost to the ages, but no, I was saving it for the day that we talk about nicotine, saving it for the day that we talked about nicotine. So I think we're going to basically wind this on down here. I appreciate, I really do appreciate you guys coming out. I know that news and advocacy and shit like this isn't the most fun. It's certainly not the most sexy part of vaping. It's, it's the least, you know, 
interesting, fun part of vaping, but I feel like it's just really, really necessary. And I'm always going to try to get as much information out there to anyone who wants to listen about vaping. I'm going to leave you with, uh, I'm going to leave you with a thing here. I'm going to leave you with a thing here. No, no, not Eddie Van Halen. I'm going to leave you with two things here. I'm going to post two more links in the description. One of them comes from Scientific American via Reuters. This is from 2015, and it is a great, great, great little article on nicotine. Oh, my God, so great. It holds up there with, like, the Sally Sattel Forbes piece about nicotine. It talks about Ann McNeil here. We need to de-demonize nicotine says Ann McNeil, a professor of tobacco addiction at the Institute of Psychiatry, Psychology, and Neuroscience at King's College London. She spent her career researching ways to help people quit smoking. She thinks we need to de-demonize nicotine. Uh, I'm inclined to agree with her. And then I'm going to leave you this really sterile looking paper. And this is something, you know, I, I, I don't, and again, I don't do this to just pimp out my own website, but I'll have a link in the description. You can go to grimgreen.com slash advocate. And there are loads of links, loads of studies, loads of graphics to help better feed your brain with information and to better, you know, I don't like the term arguing. I think we need to argue less. I think we just need to talk more and listen more. But when you're on Facebook or you're on Twitter and you see, you know, Tobacco Control Alliance of Kenya talking about how oh, vaping is worse than smoking and it causes cancer. You can go, oh, well, actually, I have this, this study that was published in uh, the BMJ where the conclusion that they came to was that optimal combinations of device settings, liquid formulation, and vaping behavior normally result in e-cigarette emissions with much less carcinogenic potency than tobacco smoke. Yeah. The chances of electronic cigarettes giving you cancer are, I mean, look, again, I'm going to say this. I'm not a doctor, not a lawyer, just your average, whatever, tattooed trash that reads all this crap. The chances of it giving you cancer are, I mean, are basically slim to none. Just zero. Just, just nothing. Just, bah, just nothing. Basically nothing. Basically nothing. Don't let anybody tell you any different. It's basically nothing. I'm going to post a link to this, again, very boring looking, sterile study from the BMJ, but it's something I keep bookmarked and I put links like this in that grimgreen.com advocate area. So if there's things you're looking for, you know, if you're discussing Evoli on social media, you're discussing success rates or quitting success rates. I, you know, I have that New England Journal of Medicine randomized trial that was done by uh, Professor uh, or Professor Dr. Ricardo Peloza, who showed that vapor products were at least twice as effective, maybe more twi than twice as effective as any NRT currently on the market. I just feel it's important to... Fill your brain. Holy shit, did I not have the Tuesday Bro Tuesday logo? Tuesday Bro Tuesday logo. Holy crap. I think it's important to feed your brain, to shut down haters, to shut down liars, to shut down people who just want to spout off misinformation. And, you know, we're, we're, we're in a crazy time now. It's going to get crazier. It's going to get crazier right after the election. You know, vaping right now is just buried under a pile of 2020. <laughs> Just buried under a pile of whatever became 2020, you know? But I think after the election, as we start moving into the new year, this is going to be a hot topic. Uh, there's going to be a lot of legislation and it, it, you know, it hinges on what happens in November. And look, I got my official, uh, let me cover up some information here. I got my ballot in the mail. This is the general election. This is all of LA and the federal election. And it even comes with a little I voted sticker over here that I can save. I was originally going to vote with you guys here today, but there are some, uh, some ballot measures here in California that I haven't uh, properly read up on, you know? So I, I want to make sure I have all my information before I vote, but I'm going to mother truck and vote. And a lot of what happens in vaping is going to decide 
what happens with uh, vaping, tobacco control, you know, and you see things. I posted a tweet just the other day to Joe Biden. Joe Biden said, uh, listen to scientists. So I said, yeah, listen to science, listen to scientists like this, like these, like all, like all of these scientists who are going, what, what? Yeah. Smoking way, way less harmful, way less harmful, like an order of magnitude less harmful than burning deadly combustible tobacco. What are you kidding me? This is a no brainer. Let's listen to those scientists. Maybe Joe Biden, maybe we'll see how it goes. I should, I put the, I voted sticker on my water bottle. I definitely have room for it. I got a big open spot right here, right next to truth butter. That's I can't put it on there until after I vote. I can't put it on there until after I vote. Speaking of stickers, Here's some shameless self-promotion. Uh, we're putting together a bunch of sticker packs for the, the GrimGreenMerch.com. The nicotine is not a crime in here. Truth Butter's in here. A bunch of Grim Army nonsense. This is, this is patron stuff in here. But we're going to have sticker packs soon for, uh, for GrimGreenMerch.com because who doesn't love a good sticker? Damn it, who doesn't love a good sticker? Anyway, I think we're going to go ahead and uh, wrap this here up, you guys. But like I said... I'll have links for literally everything that I talked about down in the description. I would encourage you to read as much as you possibly can. Get out there and tweet and Facebook as much as you can. Tell your vaping story and uh, keep keep fighting the good vi- keep fighting the good fight and vote. Vote this November or or don't vote. You know, vote. You, it's hard telling people to not vote, but I'm a firm believer that if you don't want to vote, <laughs> that you shouldn't vote. Or if you don't think that any candidate is representing you, then that is your right as an American to to not vote. But I would encourage you to vote. Definitely encourage you to vote. Vote your hopes. Vote your hopes. So, okay, let's wrap this up. I'm sorry. I've been rambling too long and I don't want this to run too long, but seriously, thank you guys uh, so much for watching. Remember, no matter what anybody tells you, Steve Webb, fist bump, bro. That's very, very, very gracious of you. Appreciate you. Appreciate you very much. Remember, no matter what anybody tells you, vaping is at least 95% less harmful than burning deadly combustible tobacco cigarettes. So yeah, let's keep on vaping guys. Be excellent to each other. All right. Peace out.